Well, the first time of 2022 turned out to be a real gas. Well, welcome to Finding America. It is really great to see you here. Well, this week's hunts really blew me away. And the first one you're about to see took place on New Year's Eve, the last day of 2021. The weather forecast here in East Tennessee was not looking good for the weekend. So I went ahead and went out New Year's Eve. I only had a few hours of hunt, but I had a few things that I found that I wanted to share with you. Well, I'm out uh, New Year's Eve and uh, just kind of just moseying around, digging signals. And I'm running in Park 2, uh, the factory settings, running the 15 inch coil. And I got this signal, it was a 2122 signal. And I got a tube. This one's unmarked, so. Uh, but I got a little bonus find when I flipped the plug. Check it out really cool little green bottle here and uh, that's pretty cool I like it when I can find the green and the blues they display really nicely and uh, that's a nice little piece not broken so I will definitely put that in the pouch and keep on going I got a little bit of dump here going on a lot of broken glass in China and then this thing so I'm just poking around maybe I'll find a marble or something Well, this next one was giving me a nice high tone, about 23, 24, uh, just a couple inches down. It's nothing too special, but it is an old piece. And this is an early Pond's Cream Company uh, jar lid. So, pretty cool. You're going to be looking at early 1900s with this piece. Well, this one was giving me a nice high tone, 23, 24, kind of had my hopes up and uh, dug down. It's still a pretty cool little find. It's an old uh, fuse, but it's an old glass fuse. And it says Pyrex, General Electric Company, USA. So it's pretty cool. It's made out of uh, Pyrex glass and uh, it's definitely got some age to it. Well, I didn't come away with too much from that last ten of 2021, and I kind of went out like a lamb. But I really wanted to get back out there because now I had a serious metal detecting itch, and that last hunt definitely did not scratch it. So I headed out the next day, January 1st, 2022, my very first hunt of the year. And little did I know that my finds and the weather were going to be roaring in like a lion by the end of the day. I'm out here Saturday trying to get a little more detecting in. We've got a big storm coming in and I apologize for the wind. I'm going to try to shield as best I can, but we've got some, uh, we got a pretty wicked one coming in in about five, six hours. So hopefully no tornadoes, <laughs> but I got a nice little 12 signal here and it, w it said it was pretty deep. It's about eight inches. Not quite that deep. It was a smaller target. But I think, I haven't even looked at it yet, but I think I have a button of some type. Uh, looks like it was iron back, so probably overall, I don't know. And there you go. Let's see. Uh, it's a little hard to make out. It might be a duck head. I'm going to get it cleaned off a little bit and I'll be right back, but that's a nice little find. Still a little hard to make out, but I think I have an early duck head. Probably 30s. But I'll get that cleaned up when I get home, and uh, happy to see that.
Well, this is a very cool hole, and believe it or not, I've dug these before. I think I'm in almost the exact same spot. I guess I missed some. There was an old video called Down the Rabbit Hole, and I dug, I don't know, 20-some buttons out of one hole, and it looks like it just happened again. I tell you, the first thing I got was a lid uh, to a product that isn't really family friendly, so I never show them on my video, but it's old, dates from the 20s or 30s, and then I ran the coil over the hole again, got a bang in 24-25, and pulled a 52 weedy out, and then I got more signals, and I pulled out a jeans button. And this is the variety that says Samphorized. Now, Samphorized stood for a process where they used a chemical treatment on the jeans when they made them, and that way they kept them from shrinking in the wash. So usually a jean jacket or overalls or denim would have at least one of these Samphorized buttons. And I also found one that has the brand name, and I love these. It's a jackrabbit button. <laughs> so that's pretty cool and uh, yeah the jackrabbit brand I've only found it at this one place I really haven't found a jackrabbit button anywhere else I don't think but uh, I could be wrong on that but I do like digging these it's a very cool button and uh, not a bad hole at all Well, it's pretty cool. I just dug those buttons over here, and I moved over about 10 inches, and I got a nice 1920 signal right here, and I dug down pretty darn deep too, about 9, 10 inches, and I flopped it out on my drop cloth, and I finally fished it out, and I cleaned it up to save a little bit of time, but it looks like I got another wheat penny. So this one's going to be a 53 with a Denver mint mark. Very cool. I will definitely take that. Well, going along and really enjoying that 15 inch coil as always. Uh, got a nice signal here, was able to isolate a 19 to 21 signal. And pretty deep as you can see, about eight inches. It's actually really cool. I've been cleaning it up a little bit, but there it is. I thought it was just gonna be like a lid to a jar or something, but it isn't. I believe this is actually the wheel. It looks like the wheel and the tire to an old toy car or truck. It's, it's just really cool. I'll get it cleaned up a little more when I get home, but I like that. So probably going to be 20s, 30s, could be even older. So neat little piece. Well, I got a pretty nice find right here too. One that I really enjoy finding. It's giving me a 17, right around that, 17, 18. Dug down about six inches and I saw it pop out. It's one of the nicest ones I've dug. It's a bale sale for the Southern Railway. See the SRY? That's one of the nicest, clearest, best centered. <laughs> Cause these were all hand punched by the people loading the train. And that thing is beautiful. It's just nicely centered. And here's the, uh, okay, it's a B2 is the number on it. Now this number here would be the uh, location on the train where this, uh, it could have been a bag, it could have been a crate, it could have been a pallet. But that's, that's the location on the train where this was stored. And uh, that's pretty cool. That's honestly the best one I've ever dug. Well, we have some mystery solved this week, thanks to all of you watching last week. You might recall that strange flower pattern piece that I showed you in last week's video. Now, a lot of you were extremely helpful and sent in many suggestions, including 
it being an earring or a button hook. But there was one idea that I got, and after some research, it really seemed to fit. Julie was watching the video and sent me a comment and suggested that it was a vintage cake tester. And honestly, it really seemed to fit. And I want to thank Julie so much for that because I would have never have thought of that. Now, I also found another very interesting mystery item in last week's episode. Well, the response to that one was also overwhelming, and the consensus was definitely that it was one half of a tea ball used to steep tea. And the very first person to let me know that was Rodney Castleman. So a huge thank you goes out to Julie, Rodney, and everyone else who helped make last week's mystery finds become this week's mystery solved. Well, I was getting a nice 13, 14 signal here, about six, seven inches down, got a nice old head stamp for a shotgun shell. And I think it's a UMC brand. And it looks to be 12 gauge, it's a, what does it say? Yeah, it's a, it's a Nitro Club. So, that's an older one. When I get home, I'll date it and uh, give you a better picture of it. But I enjoy digging these old head stamps. A uh, pretty cool target right here. It's giving me about an 18, 19. Very, very deep. About a foot. And look what popped out. <laughs> It's like a complete harmonica. It's even got the fiber board in between the reed plates. And I think it still has the reeds. So that is pretty cool. Don't find them like that every day. So had to show you that and uh, neat little find. Well, I was double checking the hole before I filled it in where I found that harmonica. And I was getting a signal down there and I pulled it out and it looks like I got the remains of a railroad spike. So yes, that does give me a great excuse to put a very cool train picture up. Well, this hole just keeps on giving. I got the harmonica, the railroad spike, and I saw a little something poking out and I just popped it out, but what a pretty piece. Some type of uh, glass platter. Very cool, I wish that was whole. But I'll get it cleaned up, give you a better look at it, but that's a really nice piece. Well, I didn't have much time left to metal detect there as the storm was moving in. And as I looked up at the gathering clouds, I heard a signal, a huge signal that would give most machines an overload signal. But it's always fun to dig those because it's interesting to see what they are. And this time, what I found absolutely blew me away. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> ooh, I like this one a lot. Uh, yeah, you can probably tell I'm a little excited. <laughs> I tell you, I, I dig it all, and this was a big signal. And when I dug down, I saw the edge here of this uh, thin metal piece. And as I started to uncover it, I noticed I kept hearing something weird, and I looked, and every time I moved the sign, it made the noise. And it was a old uh, 10, 2, and 4 Dr. Pepper bottle. Unfortunately, the nick was broken off, but pretty cool. You know, 50s, right around there somewhere. I can probably get a date off the bottom of the bottle. But I was like, man, do I dig this piece of junk metal out of the ground or not? And I'm like, yep, you just got to. Because honestly, I was hoping it might be a sign. And not a sign of things to come, but an actual sign. <laughs> and I'm, I, I'm not even going to say anymore. I'm just going to turn this over. It is just so awesome. I kind of let out a whoop when I saw this. Check this out. Look at that. It is an original Fire Chief Texaco gasoline sign. Oh my gosh. It's porcelain. Look at that. Holy cow, that's amazing. Hopefully you can make it out. It's got the fire head here. 
says fire chief gasoline this sign would have gone on the front of the gas pump and this is it's even more special because i know the history of where i am hunting also now a, little, a bunch of videos ago i found a really cool pontiac indian chieftain head cufflink i gave it to this woman that gave me permission to hunt her mansion. Now her father owned the Pontiac dealership near the house. And this was one of the gas pumps that sat in front of the Pontiac dealership. And this is the sign. Oh my gosh, can you believe it? Uh, and the reason there was a Pontiac dealership here back then was because it had a really busy, noisy intersection, just like it still does. <laughs> But tell me that is not cool. That, oh boy. No, don't tell me, because it is. It doesn't. <laughs> wow, what a cool piece. I'll tell you what, dig those overload tins. <laughs> now I had to come back because after I turned the camera off, I'm like, you know, it's probably dated in the bottom corner. So I wiped it off, and it definitely is. And check this out March 1940. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? 82 year old gas sign who I can't wait to get this cleaned up. It's obviously gonna have some problems, but that's just patina <laughs>I was so thrilled to have found this sign because one, I have always been into classic cars almost my entire life. And two, I knew that there was an old Pontiac dealership called Gateway Pontiac that once stood at the very spot that I was swinging my coil. Well, the man who owned Gateway Pontiac lived in a mansion on a hill above the dealership. And as a matter of fact, his daughter still lives there. Now, I've gotten to know her very well, and one day while I was metal detecting on her property, she came out and invited me into the house, and she gave me a photograph of Gateway Pontiac as it looked back then, and the photograph was taken in the early 1940s. Now, as soon as I dug up that sign, I remembered that there were some Texaco gas pumps in front of that dealership in that photograph. So when I got back home, I pulled that photograph out, and there it was. My very sign attached to the fire chief gas pump in front of the dealership. Well, finding that fire chief sign is so special to me, not only because it's a great piece of local history, but I also know the history of the location where I found it, and I have a photograph that actually shows that very sign in use. And that's why I always say, History does indeed make the find a treasure. I'll tell you what, I ran my coil over the hole again, it went off. I'll tell you what, it's an automotive themed hole and that is my favorite kind. I dug down and I pulled out an old ignition coil. <laughs> now this is an early one, this is Delco Remy. And it's probably gonna be about the same vintage as that sign, 40s, 50s. So that was very cool, but as I pulled this out, I saw something else roll out. Look at there, a marble. Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, yellow, oh, look at that, a little bit of orange in it. Ooh, what a hole, huh? Oh man, that's awesome. Well, definitely gonna have to have a group photo. <laughs> Well, I was just putting this hole all back together again, and I ran my coil over it, and I got another signal, 2526, and believe it or not, after all that goodness in that hole, we're gonna get to play Unroll the Tube again. <laughs> Look at there. That is another rolled up tube. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Uh, I'm just hoping it's not gonna be rectal cream. <laughs> If you don't know what I'm talking about, just check out the last video. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. It looks like it's going to be Colgate toothpaste. Oh, cream for the other end. <laughs> Well, 
what an amazing first time of 2022. And I really hope that's a, uh, a sign of things to come. Now, don't go anywhere just yet. I want to show you some amazing pictures of what it was like to make a trip to the gas station all those years ago. And remember, it's history that makes a sign a treasure. And I cannot wait to see you back here next week on Finding America. Thank you.